Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week I'll be answering a question asked by one of the Talking Bass members, Henry Snow. He's been asking uh, for some tips on working out the key of a tune, so I'll take you through some basic methods for looking at a key in different circumstances. If you've not been on over to uh, TalkingBass.net, then go check it out. There's loads of different lessons over there on every aspect of bass playing, along with free downloadable lesson material, and there's also a bunch of other handy resources too. You can sign up to uh, TalkingBass.net for free to receive your free scale reference guide that's full of every scale that you're ever likely to need, and you'll also receive email updates on new weekly releases and all the news on uh, big Talking Bass developments. So in working out the uh, key of a tune, we're generally going to be in one of three main situations. One, we have the sheet music. Two, we have a basic chord chart. Or three, we have neither and are just learning the tune by ear or using tab. Now I include tab in this situation because it's going to give us the same information as a basic learning of the bass line without chords or a key signature. So I'm going to address these uh, situations one at a time, but before I get into all of that, I just want to give you a very quick tip that can help 90% of the time in finding the key. Look at the first and final chords or bass notes of the song. These are usually going to be the tonic chord, okay? So um, progressions are usually fairly repetitive in, uh, in tunes, not always, but a lot of the time they are. So if we look at the key of uh, C major, I'll play a basic chord progression in C major. I've got C major, G major, A minor, F, okay? Okay, so that chord progression is going round and round. Look at the first chord. C major. C major is the key. First chord there, C. That chord progression could be going round and round, you know, a little bit different here and there, but you know, we might finish with that chord progression again. Listen for the final chord of the tune. C major. Okay, so the first chord there and the final chord of the tune were both C major, the key of the piece is C major. Hey presto, you figured it out. Now obviously as bass players we're probably not going to be playing the chords like that, so we're probably going to be playing the root notes. So again, with uh, a chord progression like that, C, G, A, F. I just look at the root note of the chord there, C. C, G, A, F. First, first note there was a C key of C major, okay? Simple. So that's the first uh, first uh, chord there. Again, if we're coming to the end of the tune. And you can even hear that sense of uh, resolution at the end there. So there we are, end of the tune, C, key of C major. If we're in a minor key, it's gonna be the same thing again, but we're just gonna be on a minor chord, okay? So let's say I'm in G minor. So there I've got G minor, A minor 7 flat 5, D7, back to G minor. The chord progression started on a G minor, the key's G minor. And again, the chord progression there, it finished on the G minor, giving it that sense of resolution. G minor again, the key is G minor. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this works about 90% of the time, it doesn't always work, it doesn't always start on the uh, tonic chord, it doesn't always finish on the tonic chord. But if it doesn't finish on the tonic chord, you'll probably be able to hear it. So if I'm playing a chord progression like this, C, F and G. Okay, we can hear that chord progression working round. If I was to finish on the C, you know, there's that sense of resolution. If it doesn't finish on the C, it's going to be left hanging and you'll be able to hear that and that sounds like this. Here how it hangs there, wants to resolve, but it hasn't resolved. Okay, so that's just listening out for the chords. If we were playing the bass note, Again, 
it's that same feeling of wanting to uh, come back to the uh, root note there. So you'll be able to tell there, and if that happens, you know you're going to be on something that's not the tonic, and you might be able to hear that maybe may on chord five, and you need to go back to one. Either way, um, you know, you can kind of hear where you are in the key. So, as I said before, that's a very general tip, and it doesn't necessarily tell you anything about any modal stuff or modulations or anything like that. It just uh, It's just to give you a start. If the song has a fade out, then it's a little more of a problem in hearing the last chord of the tune, but just listen out for the feeling of resolution at the end of each song section, or at the end of a repetitive progression like we were using there. Uh, I'll be going a little deeper into that sound and feeling of the tonic note uh, or chord a little later in the video, so uh, just keep watching out for that. So, first of all, let's have a look at a situation where you have the sheet music. Now, if you have the sheet music, then you're at an instant advantage in learning the key because it's usually right there at the start of the stave by way of a key signature. So, um, take this tune on screen, for example. The key signature at the start of each of those staves shows one flat. Now, if you know your key signatures, well, then you'll instantly recognize that as the key of F major. So, that's a start. Learn your major key signatures so that you can recognize them at first glance. So uh, here's a list of the signatures uh, by flats and by sharps. So we've got one sharp is G major, two sharps is D major, three sharps A major, four sharps E major, five sharps B major, six sharps F sharp major, and seven sharps is C sharp major. Then we can work through the flat keys. So one flat is F major, two flats B flat major, three flats E flat major, four flats A flat major, five flats D flat major, six flats G flat major, and seven flats C flat major. I've devoted an entire lesson to the subject of keys over at TalkingBass.net in the Music Theory for Bass series. There you'll learn what keys are, and you'll also learn the cycle of fifths, uh, so that you can work out both the keys and the notes that are altered in each of the keys, the accidentals. So uh, check that out, or simply use the PDF that I've included in the uh, video below, and then you can use that to uh, figure out what the key signatures are. So the key signature is a useful tool, but it doesn't always tell us the complete story. There's also minor keys and tunes that don't fall into the standard major or minor key boxes. Blues tunes are a good example of this. Uh, modal pieces also present problems, but minor keys are the most common deviation from the norm. Uh, first of all, if a tune is in the key of E minor, we don't use the E major key signature, obviously. It's not just a case of thinking, oh, it's in E you know, E major or E minor, you know. That's not how it works. The E major key signature is for E major. For a minor key, we have to look at relative minor scales or keys. Now, every major key has a relative minor key, and it's really easy to find because we just look two notes below the tonic. So if we take a basic C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, the major scale can be found by just moving down two notes, well it's actually three notes if you move down C, B, A. So C, B, A. Okay, so we've moved three notes down through the scale. Or you can move up six notes through the scale, so C, D, E, F, G, A. Okay, C, B, A. Whether you want to go up or down, it's completely up to you. So um, the relative minor of C major is A minor. So C major and A minor are both related. So they both actually share a key signature. So the key signature for C major is no sharps or flats. The key signature for A minor is no sharps or flats. Okay. So if we were to look at G major, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, and we were to work down those three notes there, G, F sharp, E, E minor. Okay, so G major and E minor share the same key signature of one sharp. So if we were playing or writing a piece in E minor, the key signature at the beginning is going to be one sharp. Okay? If we want to work this out in the opposite direction, so working from the root note of the minor key, which is probably more useful, we just go in the opposite direction. So we just go up to the third note of the natural minor scale. So you have to remember it's the natural minor scale that we're using. So, um, a minor, so we're in the key of A minor, okay? There's an A. We use the A natural minor scale. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Work up to the third note. A, B, C. So we know that for A minor, we're going to be using the C major key signature. And it's as simple as that. If we were in D minor, 
we use the D natural minor scale, we just work up three notes, D, E, F, okay? So we're gonna be using the F major key signature. So for, there we are, we're in the key of D minor, what key signature are we gonna be using? We use the F major key signature, one flat. Okay, so this is all really handy stuff, but how do we know whether the key is gonna be major or minor based on the key signature if every key signature has a major and a minor key attached to it? Well, this is where some of the other techniques that, uh, that I've covered come into play. You know, the ones that I used in the opening uh, tip and also that we'll be looking at in the chord um, chart uh, stuff. So, first of all, you need to look for a, a, a tonic chord, okay? So if you've got chords there on the, on the chart, look for the chord progression and have a look there and that, that'll give you a good clue. So, let's say that we've got a, uh, you know, we've got a piece of music there. The key signature is one sharp. We know that that sharp is gonna be either G major or E minor, we already know that. So which one's it gonna be, G major or E minor? Well, if there's some chords there, have a look at that. If it starts on a G major, and ends on a G major, you know, you know it's gonna be G major. If the key signature is, again, is one sharp, G major or E minor, which one's it gonna be? If it starts on an E minor, ends on an E minor, you pretty much know it's gonna be E minor. Next, check out the bass line. Look for patterns like the major and minor arpeggios, major scales, minor scales. That's gonna be giving you a big clue as to what key we're in. So, let's say that the key signature, no sharps or flats, so is it C major or, e, uh, or A minor? Well, if the bass line sounds like this, you know, you can pretty much see that C major scale there. It's gonna be in C major, okay? Let's say that the key signature is, uh, is, is too sharp, so it could be D major or it could be B minor. Well, if the riff's like this, okay, Iron Man, it's gonna be B minor. You can see the scale. See the scale there, see the arpeggio there. So you just have to know your minor and major scales to work out that stuff, okay? So even though the key signature was there, you know, two sharps there, we don't know if it's D major or B minor based on that. You have to look at the actual music and look at the context. When you're just looking at sheet music uh, in this way, you know, the key signature there, it's also worth remembering that for minor keys, they often use the harmonic or melodic minor scale, and that can also be a giveaway. So if we've got one sharp in there, G major, so that one sharp there, the F sharp, um, that could also be E minor, so that's the E natural minor scale. If it was using the harmonic minor scale, it's gonna have the D sharp in there. So if it's the melodic minor scale, it's also gonna have the C sharp in there. So if you see a G major key signature and you're wondering whether it's in E minor or not, have a look there for the D sharps and the C sharps and they'll, they'll probably jump out at you. Another problem with relying on a key signature is when we have something completely outside the regular major or minor scale. So take a funk uh, based groove like this. Now that's working around a C7 chord. And the main notes are gonna be C, E, G, B flat. The scale tone's working around it. It's gonna be a mixolydian type of thing with a major sixth in there. And a tune could literally hang around on a single groove like that all the way through. But is it in C major, C minor? The C major scale, it's nowhere to be found in there. The flattened seventh is used at all times because of the C7. And this happens loads in modern music, especially blues. Traditional blues progressions usually rely on dominant seven chords on scale degrees one, four, and five. So in C, we'd have C7, F7, and G7. Now that's not C major, it's roughly in some kind of C, but it's neither major or minor. And to make things even worse, people will use a C blues or C minor blues scale through the whole thing, which makes it closer to C minor. But which key are we in? C major or C minor? You know, we've got the C7 there. You know, we've got the minor third in there in the uh, blues scale. As I say, is it C minor or is it C major? Well, 
In tunes like this, we generally base it on the third of the tonic chord. So in a C blues, C is obviously the root note, um, so it's a C7 chord. So we look at that, C, E, G, B, flat. <laughs> C, E there, it's got a major third in it, it's a major key signature. So for a standard C blues, we'd use a C major key signature. If it was a C minor blues, so using a C minor chord, so C minor 7, F minor 7 there, C minor 7, C, E flat, G, B flat, it's got a minor third in the chord there, we'd use the C minor key signature, which is three flats, okay? So if it's got a minor third in there, if it's, if it's based on a minor triad, basically, it's going to be a minor key signature. If it's based on a major triad, it's going to be a major key signature. If we go back to that original riff that I played, that was over a C7 chord, so we could be we could be hanging around on that chord all the way through a funk tune, you know, James Brown style. C major key signature, because it's a C7 chord. It's got the major third in it. If that was a C minor 7, and we were just hanging around on that, and let's say the melody, we were, it was something along a, a Dorian line, okay? Okay, so a C Dorian kind of thing. Again, it's got a minor third there. It's going to be a C minor key signature. Now, some people might say, well, if it's modal and we're using D Dorian, then shouldn't we use the C major key signature? Because D Dorian is a mode of C major, if you know your modes well. And, uh, and that'd be fine. But to simplify things, we often just use the closest major or minor key signature. Both methods are acceptable. You just have to be observant when it comes to the style and the notes being played. Uh, I think the biggest thing to take from all of this is that the key signatures are not to be taken literally on sight. Nine times out of ten, they'll get you there straight away. But don't rely on the key signature. You know, you don't want to think that, oh, it's got two sharps in it, it's D major. You know, you can't think like that. You might be able to think, oh, well, it could be D major or it could be B minor. But again, when you start bringing all these modal things into it, seven chords, all that stuff, blues, key signatures aren't going to give you exactly the right information every time. So that's key signatures. So now let's have a look at the second situation where we just have a chord chart. So sometimes we might be given, you know, a basic outline of the chords to work with, with no key signature um, or a bass line or a melody. Um, you see these regularly on the guitar websites and I've been given basic chord charts with slash notation on loads and loads of different gigs. Um, for most people, a lot of the time, you don't really need to know what the key is. Um, it's just a case of, you know, banging out the root notes and, you know, chord tones while thinking about what you're going to be having for dinner the next day. But if you want to actually take a bit of pride in what you're doing and you actually want to, you know, participate in creating a piece of music, then knowing the key or keys of that tune is going to be incredibly important. Um, if only so that, you know, when it comes to the end of the tune, you know that the root note's coming up so you can kind of re reinforce the sense of resolution, you know, so, you know, because you can always put in a certain amount of feeling into actually coming to the end of a section, even if it's to do with dynamics or rhythm or whatever. So, you know, knowing your bearings within the actual key is really, really useful. Chord progressions can be one of the best ways and most obvious ways of working out a key. To begin with, as I mentioned uh, at the start of the lesson, the root chord, uh, so C in C major, is often but not always going to be the first chord of the song. And it's almost always going to be the final chord of the song. So if the last chord of the song isn't the tonic chord of the key, as I said before, you'll know about it simply by ear. <laughs> You know, it's wanting to go back there. So there, it's giving you big clues, you know, just hearing those chords there. Even if you don't know, you know, all the harmony side of things, you don't know where you are in the key, just by ear, just hearing those chords. It's not going back to the tonic or it's going back to the tonic. You want to hear that. Probably the most useful side to having the chords in front of you written down is that you can actually recognize the chords within a key. So to anyone with a basic grasp of functional harmony, the key of the piece should just jump out at you. When I started playing, I remember reading a column in a guitar magazine that presented some chord progressions and you had to work out the uh, possible keys just based on those chords. Uh, and at the time, I just 
didn't have a clue. I, did, I didn't know how you could do that. Now, after years of studying how chords are constructed and how they all work together in progressions and just basic experience of playing them, um, I can usually instantly or very quickly recognize a key, as most people will, you know, if they're used to this stuff. Um, it's not even a case of working it out. You know, you can just recognize certain chord progressions because, the, you know, you see the patterns and the very, very uh, popular patterns. So it should just pretty much jump out at you if you can see the chord progressions there. Not so much with the bass line, but if you've got the chords there, it gives you more information than just the, uh, just the bass line itself. So yeah, chord progression is really handy for this. Your first step in developing an eye and an ear for harmony in this way should be to learn the diatonic chords within a major and minor key, okay? So if we look at the key of C major, we can number each note of the scale. So we take a C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and we number the notes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a seven note scale, so we just go up to seven. You could say eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, obviously, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven within that octave, okay? So C is one, D is two, E is three, F is four, G is five, A is six, B is seven, okay? Once we've numbered each degree of the scale, we can then build chords from each of those degrees to give us a palette of chords within the key, okay? And that's how we know that if we're gonna be playing a D in C major, it's gonna be D minor, or if it's gonna be an F, we know it's gonna be a major, okay? So we've got this palette of chords. Now, I go into how to build these chords by stacking thirds uh, in my Music Theory for Bass series over at Talking Based on it. So, if you want to get into all that, just go check it out. Uh, but for now, I'll just give you the sequence of chords, you know, for the sake of time. So if we're in the key of C major, okay, we can run through. We've got C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished. So one, chord one, is major. Chord two is minor, three is minor, four is major, five is major, six is minor, and seven is diminished, okay? Now, I know on the face of it, that sequence of chords can just sound like blah, 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 coming out of my mouth, like just a, you know, how do you memorize that sequence? It's just major, minor, minor, major, major, you know. But there is a quick way to do it. All you have to do is think of one, four, and five. Now, to think one, four, and five, think blues, you know, chord, or three chord trick. You know, you always get, you know, the what chords one, four, and five all the time. Those are major, okay? The rest of them are minor, apart from chord seven, which is diminished. So, chord seven's the odd one out. That's the weird one, okay? So that's how to memorize that one thing. Oh, chord seven, weird. So that's diminished, okay? So, one, four, and five are major. The rest are minor, apart from seven, which is diminished. So, hopefully that'll help. I know that still sounds a bit cryptic in itself, but, you know, you'll get it eventually. It's a very simple sequence. So again, if I was to work through those, we've got C major, chord one, D minor, chord two, three is E minor, four, F major, five, G major, six, A minor, and B, chord seven is diminished, okay? So that's the sequence. Now, if we were to extend that with another third to create seventh chords, the sequence is as follows. We've got chord one, C major seven, chord two, D minor seven, chord three, E minor seven, chord four, F major seven, chord five, G seven, chord six, A minor seven, and chord seven, B minor seven flat five. So the, the sequence is one major seven, two minor seven, three minor seven, four major seven, five dominant seven, six minor seven and seven is minor seven flat five okay so out of all of those chords you'll see that you know you've got chords one four and five again are all major bass but chord five is a dominant seven chord and it's the only dominant seven chord in the uh, in the key which comes in really handy for actually being able to spot the key because if you see a dominant seven chord you know it's going to be a chord five that's not always the case, <laughs> but, um, you know, generally, it, diatonically, you know, when something is in key, yes, it will be. So, uh, chords two, three, and six are all minor sevens, and then you've got chord seven again, the odd one out, 
minus 7 flat 5, okay? So that's the sequence of chords, and that is one of the most important things that you can learn as a bass player. I know that if you haven't learned that already, you might be thinking, why do I need to know about chords? But trust me, in terms of learning about how music works and all these things, learn that sequence of uh, diatonic chords. It is so, so useful and so, so important. Once you learn the chords within a key, you can start to look into progressions and how chords fit together. So you'll soon notice the same patterns time and time again, and um, these patterns are going to help with working out a key. For instance, chords 1, 4 and 5 are the primary chords of the key, and they are massively popular. And because they're all major keys, they're really easy to spot. Re uh, chords, sorry. They're really easy to spot. So, for instance, this progression is strongly outlined in the key of G major, okay? So I've got chord 1, G, C major, D major, okay? So we've got G, C, D, G. Chords 1, 4 and 5, they're all major. You're not going to see that combination of you know, G upper fourth there and then upper tone. You're not going to see that in any other key. That little, if you were to look at it on a fretboard, you'd see this little L shaped pattern of one, four and five. You won't see that in any of the other keys. So again, that's a massive clue. And you'll just get used to hearing chords one to four, one, five, you know, just hearing those particular chords. So this is all the study of harmony, ear training, hearing how chords fit together, and just learning songs, just seeing these progressions all the time, and you'll gradually get a good feel for what key something's in just by which chords they are, you know, the most popular chord progressions. If you see minor chords in a progression, that can also be a giveaway because chords two, three, and six are minor. So you can work out where they are in relationship to the major chords and get a better idea of the key. So if we see a chord progression of C major, G major, A minor, F major that I played before, that set of chords are only available in the key of C. And plus, again, it's a very uh, popular chord progression. So with again, with experience of playing and learning all these progressions, you'll just get to know various ways that they get put together. And the more progressions that you learn, the more likely you are to just know um, the chord numbers straight away and which one's the tonic. So most people get used to the standard 12 bar blues progression fairly early on in playing. And I'm sure if you have, you know, you wouldn't have to work out the key. You know, you just know the progression. So you know that chord, you know, in the key of C, you know, C blues, let's say, I've got C7 there. G7, F7, C7. If you saw that chord progression and you know you're used to blues progressions, you don't have to sit there de deducing what the, what the key is. You just know because it's a very uh, familiar chord progression. So again, experience learning the chord progressions instead of just learning the bass lines. If you just learn the bass lines, you know, separate, independent from the chords. Yeah, you're going to have problems working out these keys, but if you know what the chord progressions are, you know, as you're playing those root notes, you're going to study how chords are, you know, how, how they work together. Working out a key will be very, very easy to you. So finally, there's the situation where you're learning a bass line by ear or uh, tab and you want to know what the key is. Or you start transcribing the bass line and you just know that it's going to make your life a lot easier if you know what the uh, key is. Well, you have one of two things that you can do. Either you can use some of the tips that I've mentioned earlier, you know, about uh, looking for familiar major or minor scales within the bass line or melody, or you can just use your ear to listen out for the root notes of the key. The first method can be very straightforward if we're just playing a basic repeating riff. If you know your major and minor scales, just look for those familiar patterns. So this riff from December 63 by Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons, that's outlined in a major scale so much that it could be, you know, it's going to be hard to think of it as anything else. And that Iron Man riff that I played earlier on, that's B minor. It can't be anything else. A bass riff uh, might be very static, like this. You know, that's going to be a little tougher. Then you've got to start looking for, you know, clues in the chord progression, stuff like that, you know, because if it's a static note like that, 
You've got no clues as to you know what scale it's using or anything like that. So then, yes, you've got to listen to the melody, chord progression, stuff like that. If it stays on something like that all the way through, there's a good chance, I'm on a C there, there's a good chance that that's going to be in C because, you know, we've got that note, it's staying on it. It's very rare that it's going to be playing something like the seventh, you know, something like that. Might stay on the fifth, that's a possibility, but usually it's going to be on the, uh, it's going to be on the root note of the key. Now, if you can't immediately see any patterns that help you out and you don't have a chord chart to use as a point of reference or anything like that, then there's one last great tip for you. Just use your ear. Listen to the piece and try to hear the root note of the key. Now to do this, you need to know what that sound of home and resolution sounds like, you know, of the tonic. And this is easily done by playing a major scale up from the root note to the seventh and hearing how it wants to resolve back to the tonic. So if I take a C major scale, okay, so you can hear, there's the tension, resolve, and that, that feeling of home and that feeling of resolution on the tonic, the root note there, is what you want to listen out for, okay? So, and you can hear that just by playing up to any note in the scale and then coming back, okay? So if I was to, I'm in C major again, if I play C to D and back. Every time I come back to the C there, you can feel that, that, that feeling of resolution. And again, when I go up to the top, that leading tone, into C, okay? That's what we're listening out for. This concept of tension and release, you know, this feeling of home and resolution there in a key, is the most important aspect of tonality. And it leads to all the other uh, parts of melody and harmony in, uh, in pretty much all popular Western music. So um, you can hear it in chords as well. So if we've got key of C major there, I want a C major. There's a chord progression, one, four, five, and back. You can hear us coming back home there. Okay, so again, you're always on this journey back to chord one. Doesn't matter what the chord progression is, it'll usually be working back there. And that chord five there, you know, because that contains that seventh note there that leads back in, that's why we have this feeling of uh, tension and release there. So that's what we want to listen for. You should be able to recognize the sound of that tonic in any key. So if you find it difficult, then work hard to listen out for that sound, you know, that sound of resolution in everything that you play. If you already know the key that you're in, listen to how it sounds every time that you reach that tonic again. So uh, if we're in the key of C, we're playing a chord progression, C, G, A, F, so. Listen hard for what it sounds like when you get to that C, okay? You wanna hear that, that resolution. As an exercise, the next time you're listening to a tune, try picking out the tonic note, just try singing it to yourself, okay? Just see if you can pick it out as it's, as it's working along. If in doubt, just try a few different notes, just try random notes if you have to, and then just hold them, bam, you know, while, while the thing's playing, and then just see if, it, if at some point it does resolve back to the notes, or just see whether you can find that note of resolution, you know, the, 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 and it's amazing if you if you actually do this sometimes you just got to you just get a feel for it so that if you start singing the note you think yeah that is that's that's the tonic i can feel it you just have to keep practicing it and just seeing whether it works if you try it with a song that you already know okay then that can be that can be good because you can listen to it try picking out the tonic and then try playing it and see whether you were right okay so if you had Dam. Let's say that you bam, you figured that note out as the tonic, you go over to your bass, 
and um, okay, I got it right. So you could just try that with different tunes, and I do it sometimes. If there's a if there's a song that I'm transcribing and I'm a little bit unsure of something, let's say it's a little bit weird, or you know, there's a reason why I'm having a problem with it, I might just try singing the actual tonic note that the note that I feel is the tonic. And, uh, and then work it out from there. Sometimes if there's a chord that's actually not coming back to the tonic, let's say that it is working on four or five or something like that, because chords, it, a chord progression can start on four or five. You know, and eventually land on the chord one, but it started on chord four. Sometimes that can happen and you're deceived into thinking that that first chord that you're hearing is the tonic. You know, so it's, you know, if you start on an F major, you might think, oh, we're in the key of F. And then... Damn. You know, you can just sing it sometimes and feel it and think, nah, I don't feel... Bam. Oh, no, that doesn't feel like the tonic. You know, you have this kind of thing going on. So... As an exercise, like I say, just try singing the tonic on any tune that you hear and then just listen out for that feeling of resolution. Anyway, hopefully that's helped a little in working out the key of a tune. The main things to take away and practice are your knowledge of key signatures, the chords within a major or minor key, your knowledge of chord progressions, and your general ear training. So learn to hear the root note of a key and the, that, you know, that feeling of resolution. If you practice these elements of music, you should have no problem in working out the key of a tune, no matter how tricky or weird it is. But also remember the, uh, the first tip that I gave. Look at the first and last notes or chords of the piece. They're often the root note. So do that and then check you know, what you find by maybe playing around with the appropriate major or minor scales you know, over the tune. And you'll probably find that it works. So, you know, hey presto, you've saved yourself a lot of messing around. So like this video if it's helped you out and subscribe to the Talking Bass channel for hours and hours of videos on all aspects of bass playing. Also check out TalkingBass.net for more lessons, articles and downloads. If you subscribe to TalkingBass.net you'll receive the free scale reference guide, uh, which is an ebook containing pretty much every scale that you're ever likely to need. Okay, see you later.